When I was asked to do this, when Mark Dubas asked me to do something on, on search for internet managers, you know, I thought about it and like most of you or like many of you, I've gone through all the presentations from the vendors where they come in and they talk about, you know, we're going to get you a million words and all this other stuff and hype and, um, and then I started thinking from the perspective of if, if you're working for a dealership and you've got sales reps coming in there and if what you know about search engine marketing is what you've learned from your vendors, you've received sort of a slanted perception depending on the vendor. And it's in the vendor's interest to convince you that this is so complicated that you can't possibly deal with it yourself, that they can do it much better than you could. And, you know, you need to do, you know, don't, don't play with matches, young man. Just give us the money. Um, so what I, the approach that I took is, uh, and don't get me wrong, I do, I have budget that I assign every month to, to several very good vendors for search engine marketing because it's part of our strategy to diversify our our SEM approach because it's become such a key component of our store's success. But what I want, the approach I wanted to take today, because in a limited amount of time, I, I said, what can I really show these guys? What I want to show you is what it's like to have your own, to do it yourself. Now, I'm gonna, hopefully I'll get a, time, I get a chance to talk to you all about why I use outside vendors, because some of them are very good at what they do, but basically, 50% of my SEM budget I manage in-house, and 50% I outsource. Used to be to more vendors. I've narrowed it down. Basically, our search is now being done by three vendors. Um, I know at least one of them's in the room, Nathan. But you know, outside vendors that I trust for search engine marketing, uh, Jumpstart, BZ Results, and uh, and with BZ, it's I, I can't you know they're they're my friends, so I have to you know con there's a lot of dialogue goes back and forth. And, and click motive. And those three do a good job of it. I've tried to use Cobalt, and quite honestly, Cobalt overcharges. Um, I get upset every time a dealer signs up with Cobalt because it, when somebody buys from them, you're reinforcing the fact that they're overcharging and that they can get away with it. So the only way to get a vendor to, to correct their pricing would be if nobody bought it. And uh, so, you know, I, I realize it's sort of, I'm using a, a bad platform for that, but. Um, I also made Mark very aware that when I do a workshop, you're going to get opinions. I'll express them as opinions. And then the stuff that's facts, I'll show you as facts. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're, we stay on time, plus the room's full, getting filled up anyways. Uh, basically, I work for Courtesy Chevrolet. Uh, I've been selling cars since February 13th, 1981. So I guess that dates me a little bit. Uh, these guys, I was working for Reynolds Consulting Services. I was assigned to the Asian car companies at the time I met these people uh, through a series of circumstances. I'm not going to repeat the story I told earlier today, but they convinced me to come work for them. And what, before I came to work for these people, I had heard about search engine marketing, but I didn't really know what it was. And when I, right before I took the job, a friend of mine that I had recruited to go work for the J. Wolf Automotive Group in Kansas City, when I was doing consulting work for them, setting up their internet departments, I called them up and I said, his name's Mark Vickery. And I said, Mark, I go, come on, I'm always giving you, you know, the secret sauce. I go, do you have anything good? I'm, go I'm about to go back into retail after seven years of, you know, working for Reynolds. Um, give me something that I can go in there with that's working right now. And he goes, well, he goes, I got something for you, Ralph. He goes, but I don't like to tell anybody about it because I don't want other dealers to figure it out. And this was in the spring of 05. And I said, uh, come on, Mark. And uh, he goes, well, he goes, uh, have you ever heard of search engine marketing? And I says, uh, yeah, that's where you adjust uh, the key, the words on your site, and you make your site so that it comes up in the search engines. He goes, no, 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 that's organic. That's, SE that's SEO, search engine optimization. And I go, what's the difference? He goes, search engine marketing you pay for, search engine optimization is uh, basically the free listings. And I go, well, free sounds better to me than paid. And he says, no, a huge difference. He says, optimization, everybody in the country sees it and you don't have any direct control. But with search engine marketing, you limit it to your local market and um, you have control over where your ads appear and what they say and things like that. I, I want to know more. And he goes, well, there's this woman who is the granddaughter of the founders partner and she was doing the search engine marketing for other companies. Her name's Betsy Nansen. And, uh, and I, I saw Betsy at the NADA this year. 
And, and so she's doing it for our group and, and it's unbelievable. We're getting you know, over a thousand leads a month you know, from her search engine marketing work. And I said, well, let me have her contact info. And so I got a hold of Betsy and after discussions and emails, Betsy said to me, she goes, well, she goes, the initial setup, I have two prices for you. She goes, uh, there's the $1,500 setup and the $5,000 setup. And I said, what's the difference? She goes, the $1,500 setup, I do it all on my own, you don't get to see anything. The $5,000 setup, I do exactly the same thing, only I let you see everything. And, uh, and I go, oh, explain. And she goes, because if you, because I'll teach you what it is that I do, and in about six months, you're going to fire me and do it yourself. So I did the $5,000 setup. Um, she walked me through setting up my AdWords account, pulled out my American Express card. Just so I can make sure my wallet's there. Pulled out my American Express card and took the dive and, and created an AdWords account. And, um, and that started us on the journey I'm, gonna, I'm about to share with you. And for me, it's been, um, I have a presentation I did with General Motors last week where I show an oil well, a gusher. You all know what a gusher is? Oh my God, it's oil. And they said, did you ever stop to wonder, what's with all the oil they're wasting? They're all celebrating, but all that oil is wasting? Literally for us, it's been a gusher. We've actually over revved our ability to handle the lead volumes generated to where in the last shot workshop I did, I was talking about recruiting and hiring. That's our biggest challenge. We no longer wonder, we, we literally, to us, generating leads has become like an accelerator pedal. All it takes is money, up and down. And so, and typically, just like the way I drive, too fast, we, we oversaturate ourselves with leads and we can't hire enough people to handle them. So with that said, let's, uh, get underway here. Um, just a couple of fundamentals, because I figured we'd have a range of people. This image, right, by the way, I, I think I acquired this about seven years ago. Some of you are probably familiar with it. There's basically, if you're going to get involved with internet marketing, e-business, whether it's a BDC or an internet sales department or a combination thereof, you need to solve for four issues. There's four key components of any e-business strategy, and this is universal. One is traffic, which means traffic to whatever web properties you're going to use as part of your marketing portfolio. Number two is um, after, and, and, and what I try to organize here is, is from the customer perspective. First, everything that happens before the customer gets to your website. You have to have a strategy. What's going to happen before they get to your website so they get to your website? Secondly, after they get to your websites, before they submit an inquiry, what's your website going to do to engage them so you get an inquiry? Or for that matter, if you're using a vendor, your third-party lead providers do the same thing. After the prospect submit an inquiry, but before they get to the store, what's your process? After they, you get a lead or a phone call, um, or excuse me, after you get them to come to the dealership, what happens when they show up at the dealership? What's the process when they arrive? How are they going to be greeted? These four key, key, key components, you can slice them, dice them any way you want. You're going to have to deal with it if you expect to sell cars. So what I'm talking about today is 95% number one, there'll be a little bit here in regards to landing pages and microsites. I just want to make sure, because if you're expecting a process discussion, you're in the wrong room. Basically, for online advertising, to get customers to come to your portfolio of websites, and one of the things that I, and I hope as an industry we're going to move beyond this single website theory. One website is not enough, folks. You're never going to be able to make a difference with one website. One website is the equivalent of putting up one billboard in a major metro market. You need multiple billboards located where different groups of people are. And hopefully, if you're smart enough, you put the billboard in the Spanish neighborhoods in Spanish, and you put the billboard in the, in the, in the white rich neighborhoods in, in English, and if you got a little Korea, you put up the Korean billboard in little Korea. Okay, it's, uh, you need more than one website. So if, uh, you, microsites are a great way to diversify your portfolio of online web properties. Now, how are you going to get people to go to all these different websites? There's really, uh, from what I found out there, there's four types of online advertising. You can pay for it for placement on a website by time. An example of that is AZ Central and Phoenix. I pay them 
1500 a month, they put our ad, banner ads in rotation. And depending if they sell a lot, I get less rotation. If they sell a little, I get more rotation. But I have no control over the rotation. They just take my money, and, and when I go there, I gotta keep hitting refresh until I see my ad, if I wanna see it. it it's a flat monthly fee for that ad. Uh, probably more similar to newspaper ads. You're paying for everybody. There's pay-per-click, which when most people think of search engine marketing, they think of pay-per-click. But what I'm going to show you, because when I was thinking about what am I going to use my time on, I figured a lot of you know what real search engine marketing is. What none of the vendors will show you, because none of them are willing to do it because it's too labor intensive, you can use search engine marketing for displaying image ads, banner ads, uh, multimedia ads, video ads, and place them on targeted websites using SEM. Just don't ask a vendor to do it for you. It's too much work. Pay, uh, pay CPM, pay per thousand impressions. Pay per conversion, which is real interesting. We have a company that uh, will run cable TV ads in the middle of the night, and I pay for every lead that comes in off the website, the landing page, that the infomercial refers to. I don't pay for the airtime. That's called pay per conversion. And that you're going to see more and more of that. Uh, as other media channels compete with the internet, you're going to see them getting more creative. I, I, I thought I was going to, uh, I figured it must have been, how's the saying go when, um, when hell freezes over? Uh, the Arizona Republic actually came to us and, and the funny part was they keep going, don't tell anybody because we're only doing this for you, which I don't believe because they're a newspaper. Uh, and they literally said, if you'll run an ad with URLs in the ad, we will guarantee you X amount of traffic to that URL from the newspaper ad. And if we don't get it, we'll adjust the price for the, for the newspaper ad. I sat back. We haven't advertised in the newspaper since September of 04. I, 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 I literally was just, I was amazed. I was like, okay, you, for the first time in 20 years, somebody from a newspaper has blown me away. You know, I can't believe you're willing to do that. Ask me if we did it. Did you do it? Nope. You know why? When I went to the owner with it, he said, I don't care. Those people robbed us blind for 50 years. I'm never spending a dime with them again. So I said, but boss, and he says, it's a principal issue. So at any rate, how to get it done. Here's the ads. How do you get it done? Um, Self-manage. Do it yourself. You can do it. We're going to talk a lot about that today. That's why I put green on that. Interactive advertising agencies. Um, I don't mind, I would have said this, Nathan, if you weren't in the room, but I've worked with quite a few. Right now, the only one I've found that is really good and really honest and ethical and, um, and I just a delight to work with is uh, Jumpstart Automotive. Um, they're good people. I recommend them. Uh, search engine marketing services providers, which are very different from interactive ad agencies. Jumpstart is really, I mean, they'll do it, but they're, what I'm talking about that they're really good at is something different than what click motive and, and BZ results do in terms of, a, of managing your SEM budget and charging you a fee, an administrative fee, to manage it. The going market rate, and I please, if any of you go back to your stores and want to start doing this, do me a favor, don't pay, overpay. Because all you're going to do is spoil these people, and that makes it harder for people like me to negotiate the right deal. 15% commission on the actual media purchases. In my opinion, that's too high, but that's the going market rate. Because I think it should be the same as ad agencies, which normally charge 10%. But that's the going market rate, a 15% fee. If you buy $1,000 worth of ads on Google and, and you have an agency, that, a service provider that manages it for you, you should get a bill for $1,150. Now on top of that, some of them charge a licensing fee or a monthly service fee. Um, the, the, uh, the fees, what I can, would consider reasonable is somewhere between zero and uh, $500. Otherwise, do you see what happens? Let's say you're going to spend, um, we certainly spend more than that, but let's say you're going to spend $4,000 a month. If somebody charges you a $1,000 service fee, you're paying a 25% commission, and then they're going to do another 15% or more on top of that. That is ridiculous, people. Don't pay. It'll go away if you don't buy it. But I, I feel bad because when I talk to my friends at Cobalt, who I've been beating up because I actually want to use them because it's part of our strategy, I can't get them to adjust the price because every time a dealer signs up, they go, see, we're right. Don't pay, people. It's not, wor it's not worth $1,000 monthly service fees and a 20% uh, 
service charge, they're not even that good at it, all right? I'll tell you who's really good, honestly, is Click Motive. Um, they, they do uh, some, some little uh, in, uh, things differently than the others as far as they have some proprietary software. And BZ Results, the only reason why I say that is with BZ Results, it's like having an employee, somebody you can talk to that'll, uh, you can tell them, okay, uh, we're pushing Tahoe's this week. Huh, stop, call them up the next day. Stop the Tahoe's, I need to put the money on Cobalt's. We just got, a, you know, 48 Cobalt's arrived. I need to push Cobalt's. And what they'll do is tie it in with building customized uh, deep links into the relevant content in your existing site. They do a great job with the landing pages. You know, so they're okay, but you know, you don't, this is where you gotta watch out, right here. You know what I pay BZ for my SEM fees for, for the budget I give them? Zero. Because we do so much business with them, so many websites. They tried to charge, I said no. To Sean Wolfington, I said, Sean, you're doing this for us for zero. And he agreed to do it because we have you know, multiple sites and we pay them a lot of money per month. It should be included in that. Dealer advertising cooperatives. For those of you that are GM dealers, we call these LMGs. Ford dealers call them FDAs. I believe in the future, this is where search engine marketing really belongs in the, in the ad groups. I think that's actually the right place for them. One little tip, if any of you are on, in, on your LMG boards or involved, uh, I went to an LMG meeting and combined with uh, somebody who's here I don't know if he's in the room, but Drew Ament from Midway Chevrolet. Normally Midway and us were like mortal combat enemies. But on the LMG, we both insisted that uh, Campbell Ewall Retail and their search engine marketing do negative, camp negative keywords on our, on, the, on our names. That they would specifically exclude bidding on courtesy or Midway or Van or Chapman or, you know, because otherwise we're just bidding against ourselves. We're bidding against our own ad associations. And we got that done, they did that. It wasn't even that hard. Now, um, the only reason why I show this is, is we put the bulk of our money into Google. We do use Yahoo. The new Yahoo Panama SEM management tool is good. What they're basically doing is Yahoo's getting more and more like Google. Google's business model works. Um, for those that aren't too familiar with this, Basically, with search engine marketing, it's an auction, and you're bidding for placement of your sponsored links, otherwise known as an ad, in this case a text ad, to appear. And the reason why we started using it is because when somebody goes online and types in something like Chevrolet Corvette Dealer Phoenix, if you're selling Chevys and you got Corvettes, do you want to get that, that person's attention? That is about as direct a Corvette lead as you're going to find when they're searching for information about Corvettes. Okay, most people don't do it because they're looking for the 128 scale toy models. They're usually that kind of a search. So we decided that that was a sweet spot. We wanted to get that customer. I can remember it well, August 2005. I went to this URL, adwords.google.com, and then it pops in the, automatically the select login. And uh, Betsy walked me through the process of setting this up, start now, and uh, we've never been the same since. Uh, the, the, what happened after that is in 06, we, we retailed 11,000 cars. We'd never broke 9,000 before. We went from 7,000 new to 7,700 plus new, and we sold over 4,000 of those cars to internet leads, and a good chunk of those leads came from our search engine marketing. When, when you get into this, the AdWords team, the Google team, supplies a remarkable amount of coaching and guidance at no charge. What really amazes me is any one of you in this room, and I really mean this because if you're here at this conference, you're, you know, you're amongst the best of the best in the industry. Any one of you can go in here and without this workshop, without any assistance at all, you can figure this all out. I mean, Betsy showed me a few things, but it was, it was easy. It was, I've learned more from Google than I ever learned from Betsy. It was still worth the five thousand. I'll, I'll uh, agree with that. I had that within forty-five minutes. I, I had yep. something going. I was just tinkering around, playing with it. And forty-five minutes, you'll have some stuff going. Yep. And it's amazing when you realize what you can do with the tools Google supplies. It's very difficult to justify outsourcing it because it's actually fun. I mean, it, you'll it's it's good stuff. I mean, you're you're gonna love it. So once you this is the when I when I log in, this is my campaign summary. And, uh, oh, by the, I, I wanted to bring up this point. How many of you ever heard a vendor make this claim like, 
we're gonna get you a million different keyword combinations. Has anybody ever heard that? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you from somebody who's tried to do it, Google won't let you. They're full of crap, okay? I have, I have built my one main account up to the point where Google sends me this message. We are unable to process your request to add or edit your keywords. Adding these keywords would increase your account's total number of keywords beyond a manageable amount. Please add fewer keywords or reduce the number of existing keywords in your account. Refining your keyword list, blah, 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 blah. So I got a hold of my friends at Google who are just phenomenal people in their automotive division to work with. They don't know a darn thing about selling cars, but they know this stuff. And uh, so I've been trying to teach them about selling cars, so it's been a sort of a cross-pollination pro process. Um, I'll be at the Googleplex on April 19th. I'm proud to have been in, invited. They're going to have CEOs, all the major car companies there. And I'm the, I'm the uh, I call it the iguana. Um, I, when I was a kid, my father brought me to a W.T. Grant's. Now I'm really telling you how old I am. W.T. Grant's, and they had an iguana, and I wanted it. So he let me buy it. We brought it home, set it up on the kitchen table in a, in a terrarium. I sat there staring at it, and, was, and I, I got overcome. I remember I was maybe nine years old, and I thought, now what do I do? Well, I get to be the iguana. They're going to bring me up to the Googleplex, and I'm, I'm the one token internet you know, dealer guy that they're going to bring up there for the CEOs of all these car companies. So I'm going to play with their heads when I go up there. It'll be fun. <laughs> I get to be the iguana. But at any rate, uh, I, the point I was trying to make here is um, I called them up and I said, so how many is too many? What's the limit? It's about 100,000. You can manage about 100,000 uh, keywords. And then when you hit the wall, that's the message you get. I was actually kind of proud of myself when I hit that. Uh, <laughs> took a lot of work. It's kind of like breaking, you know, it's kind of like running out of your color when you're playing roulette in Las Vegas. You reached the end of the internet. That's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Um, okay, let's talk about some results uh, just to kind of draw you into this. And I'll show you how we did it. From January of 05 to July of 06, when we really got, uh, uh, this is our leads, and, and I'll show you where we started uh, doing the search engine marketing. I think you can probably tell on the chart here. Here's August of 05 when I started with Betsy Nansen. Look what happens to our lead volume. Okay, I, you know, the results kind of speak for themselves. We now clip along pretty consistently over 5,000 leads a month. Single, single rooftop Chevy store. Rob, yep. um, are these sales leads or do you have uh, service leads, cards? Mm, these are just the, these are, well, hang on a second. When I pull this report out of BuzzTrack, there's a few service leads get mixed in there by accident, uh, but the service leads are actually routed to a, to a different account. I mean, we've tried to isolate that, not for metrics purposes, just because we're so overwhelmed with sales leads, we don't have time to fool around with the service leads. Our service department has hooked up with one of the vendors. Anybody out there notice Time Highway? Well, we use Time Highway to get in to, for our online service appointments that goes into the service department, and they do uh, 20 to 30 or so appointments a day that come into the dealership from the online service. And then we have Nugen that handles the toll-free phone numbers that uh, they book a service appointment and they use that same technology that the customer uses online. The, the service department is really happy with that whole setup. Well, the only reason why I ask you this is during our search engine marketing campaign, which covered nine months, 90% mm -hmm. of our phone calls were service. Interesting. I can tell you how to eliminate the, the, uh, the results for service. You have to use negative keywords. I, use, I put in negative service, negative parts on all my campaigns. But so if somebody searches for service or parts, my ad doesn't appear. Were parts. What were they searching for? I'd say that represents a substantial service business opportunity. Because in our market, we, don't, we just don't see it. No, I, 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 but I bet your service manager is, so maybe you could get him to pay part of the bill. I've been able to. Uh, when we did the, our monthly newsletters, our service department kicks in 50% because half the people that responded to our newsletter, were inter were, it was about service, interested in service. I went to the service manager, gave, showed him it. He says, well, if you can route it so that I get those leads and can give them to one of my service advisors, and I'll pay for half the newsletter. Of course, I've got an incredible service, parts and service director, John Dunlap, is just a really savvy business guy. We're in the process of building a national parts website to start selling parts over the internet too. Anyway, I, I, I go off on too much of a tangent. Here's what was going on there. Conventional internet strategy, no SEM. Here's what happened when we got into SEM campaigns implemented. 
Um, and that would be, uh, these are the actual sales. These are the actual sales uh, on pure internet leads. This does not count the BDC. Uh, there, the phone lead, because we use BuzzTrack, we have some of the toll-free numbers that automatically go into the CRM tool. And yes, they would be in those uh, reports. Uh, the phone leads represent about 800 a month, give or take, some months more, some months less. Uh, and we do very well with the phone leads. Are those new or used or both? Both, new and used. Um, I have a real hard time with search separating uh, as much as ClickMotive does a real good job, yet their used campaigns generate as many new leads as, as used leads and same vice versa. The new campaigns, we get a lot of used leads. So, I mean, we're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. We're perfectly happy with that. But as far as trying to isolate the leads, and we know because we've even set up separate source tags by the campaign, and we still get a whole bunch of crossover into both. But for that matter, for those of you who don't know, um, there's a, some recent uh, uh, Cobalt did a real, uh, real thorough uh, study and they did a really nice job with it. Um, but one of the things they tracked working with RL Polk was 40% of new car leads end up buying a used car. You know, and that's, for us, that's been one of the biggest revelations of the last six months is trying to figure out how to get our share of the used car business out of new car leads. But again, let's focus, this, we're gonna talk about search engine marketing. Our lead volume in 06, let's fast forward, let's talk about this past calendar year. 14,792 search engine marketing generated leads. Now there is some SEO mixed in there, but the majority of that is from paid search as opposed to the search optimization. Um, our CRM and BDC recycled leads, the reason why I mention this is these are, that what they do is they rework the leads that the sales teams are unsuccessful in selling. They'll work them for months and months and months and finally bring somebody in. So there's a good portion of that probably representative of this being 24% of the total, that ends up, we end up selling them a car six months later because of our CRM you know, processes delivered, uh, executed by the Business Development Center. So, and I like to point that out because as much as the direct sales that we give to SEO, this is sort of a almost measurable branding impact in that we get the customer in our database and we market to them, market to them, market to them, and six months or a year later, we get a deal out of it. Um, but the way we track it is, at that point, it goes into the BDC's uh, reporting. And so it comes out of the internet sales team, but they're both part of my, de my department, so it's all good. As far as the sales volume, a little disproportionate. 27% of our sales, 1,075 cars we sold last month as a result of search. Uh, 1695 out of the BDC. GM leads, we, we have an excellent closing ratio, we just can't get enough of them. And then our third party leads, 989 sales last year to our third party leads. A lot of people ask me, do you use this, do you use that, do you use this? I just keep going, yes, yes, yes. Okay, because if we can make money on it, we'll do it. We're not going to say, no, I don't want to sell, sell these people cars. I don't like the third party lead providers. We don't care. We want to sell cars to everybody. So that's what we try to do. As long as it makes financial sense, we do it. Now, do you find you get a lot of duplicates between your and Yes. And marketing? Yes. 25%. 20, and you're gonna I'm going to show you a chart. We average about 25% of our total lead volume is duplicates of some kind. Uh, and that's by design, by the way. Um, this is where our, now let's talk about traffic. We've talked about leads and we talked about sales. Remember going back to the, to the traffic, interactive website, process, and then what happens on your showroom? Going back to that traffic component, pure traffic. Part of my mission was to grow the traffic. So what we did is we developed various online properties and various strategies, and then we track it all each month. It's kind of a pain. I have an administrator that she you know, I get all these different reports. Omniture site catalyst, um, the guy that builds my homemade uh, uh, microsites. He's got some tool that I never heard of, but it tracks the visit unique visitors and stuff. Anyway, she pours it all into a spreadsheet, and that's where this report comes from. Where we really started getting it, where we really started amplifying our results has been from here, which is, this is January of 07, December, November, October, September, last August. 
And if you'll notice, the section that's grown the fastest have been the microsites, the traffic that we've been able to drive to our various microsites. Now, there's a reason for that. A good SEM strategy that makes use of specialized microsites that really deliver specific content that's directly connected to the ads. After a while, they start generating organic traffic. When you first launch them, you got three months, you're in that, uh, that sandbox where nobody sees it on the search results. And then, then after about fourth month, it starts to appear. By six months, you can start backing the money down, let it drive organic, and then go to your next microsite, put the money there. What so this is a microsite, a microsite is a, a website. It's not a landing page is one page with a form. Right. A microsite has multiple pages, but it's very, it's very limited and it's very specific to a specific concept. For example, we have special finance microsites. We have a microsite for Tahoe's. We have a microsite for Suburbans. We have a microsite for Avalanches. We have a microsite for Silverados. Every model has its own microsite. Every month we have a budget to launch another microsite. Part of my challenge is coming up with new ideas. After a while, the you know, first few are kind of easy. For example, we have a microsite for people with great credit attached to unique URLs. And what it's all about is if you got great credit, we explain to them. We can get the roaches bought if we can sell you a car and get the financing. So we will give you a better deal on the price to improve our overall credit score of our loan portfolio so we can help disadvantaged people. You can take advantage of others' bad credit by letting us have access to your good credit to sell you a car, and we're going to pay you for that privilege. And uh, my finance manager came up with the idea. We built it, launched it. It works OK. I mean, we get some leads. We sell a handful of cars off of it. But again, it's, you know, at a certain point, you're stretching for the ideas, for concepts. Yes, sir? Do you use local vendors for these Yes. We use BZ results for certain types. We use, um, I, got a local, I got a guy that worked in my parts department. We now have given him enough business. My parts manager is kind of mad, but he quit. And now he's working for us as a contractor because I, I pay him $650 per microsite and $35 a month to host them. So we got enough now that he quit. But he, and that's what he's doing. So let's catch 22. That, on your microsite, mm -hmm. I would think it would be obvious, but do you have click-throughs for all your sites? Every, every, yeah. every microsite, the lead comes in, it, the source in my, CR, in my BuzzTrack CRM tool, it, the source identifies the site it came from. The way I know where the tra how the traffic gets to the site is I've got a portfolio of over 600 URLs that we, we, we manage, and we assign a unique URL to every campaign. Okay. So when I go into that site's reporting tool, I do a lead, I do a, a referring URL report for leads that have been submitted. And that tells me exactly how many leads came through that microsite from that URL, the URL is associated with a unique campaign. Um, URLs are dirt cheap. Dime dime. I mean, sometimes we have URLs that are nonsensical just because we, I mean, we kind of make them up. Next time you're online, I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, we have fun with this stuff. Um, you know, we've got GayChevy.com. Um, we've got, um, well, You Got Gas was one of the first ones we ever did. You Got Gas. And you know, we kind of had fun with that. Um, I don't want to offend anybody. No, we're in the Bible Belt. but. I, it's my own personal belief that if Jesus was here, was here today and he was going to buy a car in the United States, he would buy a Chevy. I, I, that's what I believe. I mean, and so we own JesusDrivesTheChevy.com. So, and uh, and Chris, we, have Chris, we have Christian Chevrolet, Christian Chevy, you know. Um, we have a lot of the, the people I work for are very deeply spiritual. And, you know, so sometimes we kind of cross the line a little bit, but we try to, you know, we're not going to proselytize. Yes, we do. On each of the sites. Well, here's what happens. Once the site comes out of the sandbox, it gets organically, it gets indexed. You can't, you can't avoid it. Okay? Um, and plus, we submit it. We go to, for any of you that don't know, you can go to google.com slash add URL, and you can put in a URL and request, you know, put it in the queue to be uh, indexed by the search spiders. Uh, we do, that's one of the things we do with a new site. After a while, it got to be too much work to do it with all of them. So we basically, when we launch a site, we submit the URL to be uh, indexed. Right. And then after that, it just happens automatically. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, can you manage the 
the reports or the content, it depends on who built it for us. Okay, if, uh, my BZ, my BZ microsites and my BZ main websites, I can go into one backend tool. There's a drop down that allows me to pick the specific website or microsite I want to manage, and I click that, and then all the changes I make will impact that site. That's really nice, and I wish I could. I had all of them like that, but I just can't afford it. Um, the ones that my parts guy builds for us, it's all one. I basically I don't even bother with it. I just send him an email going change this, change that, and he gets it done. Now the mistake I made is I turned on a few other dealers to him, and now what I get back from him is from Dave Jackson. He goes, well, Ralph, I'm I'm building this Mercedes sign. This guy's giving me five thousand dollars, and I I, mean, I can't do your your stuff until I get this stuff. I go, but I gave them to you. <laughs> you gotta, don't forget who brought you to the party. You know, so at any rate, it, lessons learned, right? Lessons learned. And, I'm not, and God bless him. I'm glad he's doing well with his business, and I'm glad to help him do it. But I just wish, basically, if any of you are really good at building microsites, I'd love to get a hold, get a hold of you because we could use some help. Oh, yeah, this is, it's interesting what Sal just brought up. Let me share, a, this is sort of a, it's a little bit of SEO more than SEM. Um, we had a really, uh, an experience that I said at the time, I, w I wish I knew how this happened because I'd like to duplicate it, uh, but I'll be the first to tell you, I, it wasn't on purpose. When the new Camaro concept came out in December of 05 at the Detroit Auto Show, everybody that's in the Chevy business, we all got real excited. Oh, we're getting the Camaro again. And so I went, and this is when Dave Jackson didn't have the other dealers I referred to him, keeping him busy, and I literally was looking for work for him. And I, I, so I said to Dave, I go, Dave, I need you to build a, a, a Chevy Camaro microsite for me. All kinds of information. We'll scour the internet for every photo we can find, all the spy photos and stuff. And, and I bought uh, several Camaro URLs, one of which was 2008chevycamaro.com. Because back then, we thought it was going to come out as an 08 model. Turns out it's going to be an 09 model in the fall of 08. Uh, but it, it turns out it didn't matter. Um, once we got it built, everybody in the store looked at it. Everybody was like, man, that's cool. Mm, now what do we do? Can't sell anybody a Camaro. So, what we, so we didn't do anything. But I didn't take it down either. I just let it sit there. Uh, it has a form right on the front page. About four months into it, one of my guys goes, Ralph, what's with these stupid Camaro leads? What, you know, I can't, what are we going to do with these people? And I went into BuzzTrack and I looked. And I remember, because I looked and I said, oh my god, we had gotten 128 leads on Cam from the Camaro site, and it was the 10th of the month. It was like April of 06, last April. And uh, so anyway, we devised you know, our own, I'm not going to waste time going over. We figured out what we're going to do with these Camaro leads. Make a long story short, we now get four to 500 leads a month through this Camaro site. We've never spent a dime on it. And uh, we have a database of uh, over 4,000 people that want Camaros. And every once in a while, just to see what's out there, I, like I said on an email not too long ago saying, um, we are uh, working on a project where we can award advance allocation of a new Camaro production slot to people that are in our database. Please respond and let us know if you're interested. It was un unreal. <laughs> it's amazing when you can't sell something, how many people want it. There was, a, there was over 2,500 out of the 4,000 hit reply. And, and it actually was a problem because some of them I couldn't get rid of. They're like, I want out, I want now. I got, one guy calls me yesterday, I got $15,000 in cash. I'll give you right now to give me the first Camaro. And, and we just don't work that way at that store. We do not take deposits until we actually configure the vehicle and order it and have an allocation number, production number to give to the customer. We never charge over MSRP. It's against our principles. And so, you know, we, people get mad. Take my money. No. Take my, you're a car dealer. Damn it. Take my money. Um, and, uh, you know, we go, no. So we're working on some things. But here's one thing I did end up doing. I printed out these, this big list. It was several pages long. I gave it to uh, Mr. Grubel. And he says, next time you go up to Detroit, because he's on the National Dealer Council, give this to whoever and tell him you want more Camaros. And, uh, and I was kind of half kiddingly doing this to him. You know, kind of want to impress him how many Camaro leads. And he looked it over. He says, I can use this to get more Camaros. General Motors will allocate us more cars if we have a waiting list of customers. I, I was talking about that. that if, 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 oh. If you're late, if, yep. if you have from 
Well, this is no, the. No, no, you learn, you learn from site to site. Yep. You're going to get, you're going to get better organic. Uh, Let me tell you how powerful that is. That Camaro site generates 22,000 unique visitors a month with no advertising. At the bottom of the Camaro page, and you can all go to 2008 Chevy Camaro and check it out. Just please don't fill out a lead. <laughs> anyway, uh, when, when you go in there, you'll notice at the bottom of the page are text-based links to all our other microsites and direct deep links in our inventory. You know, we just have a whole smart, whatever it is, we put it in there. Everything but the kitchen sink down at the bottom. One month, I'm looking at the report for 2007tahoe.com, which has been a great source of business for us, sales. And I noticed on the referring URLs, 2,200 customers came to 2007tahoe.com from 2008chevycamaro.com. And I was, oh my, what a revelation that was. And what, he, what Sal's talking about is, as these people, if you put, if you link, text links, not image links, text links, at the bottom of these microsites, now you have two things going on. The, the traffic you pay for, some of these people, you, you end up getting a bonus because they click on one of the links down at the bottom and go to other properties. But more importantly, the search engine spiders crawling that microsite it go to each of those links. And it becomes a geometric, that's why our traffic in the last six months has spiked, because of all the interlinking microsites. Uh, and it's, uh, it's truly something that, when it first started happening, I really wanted to be able to duplicate it, and I didn't quite understand it, and now we got a real handle on it, and this, this will keep going up and up, because uh, we now have a six month process for every microsite. We have a life cycle to each microsite where at the end of the life cycle it becomes organic, all the traffic is organic. Yeah. And you do that on every page? All the links at the bottom. All the microsites have links, yes. Very important. Down here, if you take a, uh, one of the things we like to do is take a look at closing rates. Now I want to caution, when we start talking closing rates, I'm real sensitive about this. We're not that good. Our process execution could be a lot better. It's probably our weakest uh, link because we don't have enough people. We're short on help. Over here, see these invalid leads? 24% invalids. Most of those are duplicates. Our SEO leads, 38%. You see that 38% invalid? Well, that invalid is removed from the total before the closing rate is calculated. The reason why there's so many duplicates on the SEM generated leads is because of the links. They bounce around and they fill out more lead forms. Now, if somebody's going to run around the internet for six hours filling out forms, where do you want them to go? To your store, right? So we're perfectly happy with this. If they want to submit inquiries, they can all come to Kersey Chevrolet, and I'm okay with that. We don't have to send them to Midway or Van or Chapman. They can send them all to us, and we're not going to say, oh, gee, stop. Stop sending leads to us. You need to send them to one of the other Chevy stores. We're not going to do that. So we're okay with this. The 38%... 5,600 were duplicates, and we're okay with that. But next to our GM leads, it's our highest closing rate. People ask me why. I'm going to tell you why. Because with a microsite, they know exactly the leads coming to courtesy Chevrolet, or in some cases, tomorrow morning we're going to talk about when they don't. Um, and uh, they also have picked out a specific model. You know, most of this is either a credit microsite or it's a microsite that um, is on a specific model. Somebody goes to 2007tahoe.com and says, I want a Tahoe from courtesy Chevrolet. It's just not that hard to sell them a car compared to a third party lead where they didn't even know the lead was coming to us and the lead is simultaneously sent to four other dealers at the same time. So you're, you're splitting the pie several ways. Is this a Spanish microsite? Yes, latinochevy.com. And by the way, you can try that as one word, hyphenated. I also have Latino Chevrolet, Latino Dash Chevrolet. Anything, any variation of Latino Chevy goes to my Latino Chevy site. We got, we have, we're in Phoenix. It's not hard to hire Spanish speaking salespeople. Um, uh, just uh, here's some numbers for those of you that uh, haven't seen something like this before. Basically, what I'll go to the general manager on a specific campaign. A lot of times, we'll budget a specific campaign. Uh, 33 million impressions, 29,000 uh, visitors, 2,248 leads, 174 vehicles sold. This was over a four-month period. 71,801 we spent directly with Google. It's probably why they, they're so nice to me. 
uh, $2.16 per thousand shopper impressions, $2.43 uh, per click through, $31.94 average cost per lead generated. You're going to hear the third party vendors talk about numbers like $13, $15, $18—that's because they're very aggressive on generating the lead. I want to point out to you that at, at $243, mm -hmm. okay, that's because you're in a very competitive market. Yes, it is. Y'all who are not in a competitive yeah. market might be paying $43 yep. cents to a dollar. The, the minimum bid is $0.40. Cents. It is? Well, in my, in my account, they must know that we're suckers for this stuff, because in my account, it's a 40 cent minimum bid. Oh, OK. It doesn't do any good to make it a nickel, because you would never get any. Yeah. But um, in, in less, less uh, competitive places, you're paying a fraction of that. OK, I, I, and I know I overdid it, so we're going to run out of time. I just want to move along. Hey, for those of you that want to discuss stuff, let's do that after the workshop. We have a little bit of a, a break. I want to get, for some of the people that don't do this, this SEM, you're basically buying the right side of the page and the top. What's really interesting is I went to a Google workshop. You know, everybody always wonders, how do you get to the top in the blue shaded stuff? It go, it's from a quality score. You have to have a quality score above a certain level in the index. And I'm going to show you how Google figures your quality score. Um, one of the things, and I really want to focus on the stuff the vendors won't sell you. One of the things you can do is you can build your own image ads and, and use Google to pick the websites you want those image ads to go to. And, I'm gonna, and I want, we want to use the remaining time to focus on that because two people won't show you. Google won't tell you about this because they split the revenue. Fifty percent of this ad revenue goes to the website operator. So Google is not too, they're okay. I mean, it's a good, everything they do works. Um, but they would much rather have you do search because they get 100% of that revenue. This is a shared revenue. The, um, the third party providers, search providers will not do this for you. I haven't found one. I tried to get Click Motive to do it for us because I was at one point I was spending about 20 hours a week doing this stuff. And they, uh, Stuart took a look at what I was doing. He says, Ralph, you can't pay me enough to do this. And uh, so what we've just, now what I've done is I've trained people that work for me to do it and everybody gets their own little project, which is kind of neat. You come to my store and I've got six people that know how to do all this stuff. Um, this right here is what you call content placement. You have the choice to, besides search, you can have your text ads show up on various websites that are in the Google network based on the content or the text that's within your, uh, your sponsored link. And this is kind of cool because if you do this right, and I use the URLs for this, that's part of what we use the URLs for, you can get one third the cost of a search placement on a content placement because it's, because it's, a, it's there, you're, not, you're competing with less ads that have the right content to show up. This is a Chevrolet Silverado link. So on GM Insider News, Google pulled this out of the hat, said, uh-huh, this has something to do with GM. We're going to show this ad. And I get it for about a 66% discount. And, and that really maximizes the budget. Do you bid on your competitor's name in your uh, local area? We're going to talk about that tomorrow morning. That, that comes out in the Dirty Tricks presentation tomorrow morning. Let me tell you something. What I do is perfectly legal, but it probably shouldn't be. Um, yeah, at any rate, benefits on pay-per-click. You got control, feedback, relevancy, measurable results, keyword-based advertisers, advertising. That's when they search for GM Inside New. They search for a website. They click on it. Google then owns the space inside the website. They to put one of your ads in that space based on what the original search was. That's a content ad. It's a phenomenal, no wonder they make billions of dollars. These people are geniuses. I have a question on that. Do you track the content separately from your... Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it depends on what level. At the, at the ad group level, yes. At the aggregate, when I'm pulling them out and I'm reporting, there's only so many hours in the day. At a certain point, it all gets thrown in the soup. Okay, but at the, at the ad group level, absolutely, I raise and lower my bids on content. My goal for content is to get the lowest cost clicks possible. It's a little different than the search clicks where I'm really looking for people searching for certain products. And I'm willing to pay more for certain people. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the whole mix. That's everything. Everything search. Um, oh, right, one more thing. You got, everybody needs to know this. Your content network members, what I love about content is all the search marketing providers are going to talk trash about content placement. Ooh, 
bad, tacky, you don't, you don't want that stuff. I'm telling you, I got the proof, because when somebody tells me that I don't want something, it makes me want it more. And um, so I started looking into it, and I said, well, how come I don't want something that costs less, and my ad shows up right in the middle of a website, and, and it's, because, it's because of the way that the search provider, the, the service providers work and their commission model, for some odd reason, they don't like it. Here's just a handful of those content uh, websites that with content bids you can get on, and if you write your ads properly and you have the right URLs, you can get your ads to show up on these websites, geo-targeted in your market, for a lot less money than your search listings. Well, he's talking about real, just one real quick thing. I went to MySpace, put in my name because I was looking for my son who was mm -hmm. in, in the Army overseas, and there was my name. And it freaked out. like, what is this doing here? Content. It, yeah, exactly right. But I didn't even know it, and I was advertising. Yep. I just wanted to see who was putting my name in there. And it was a, I was actually advertising on MySpace and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. You ought to see what it costs to advertise on MySpace. I tried to advertise on MySpace directly. For anything less than twenty thousand a month, they won't even talk to you. Um, so it's that, that's a back door. For those of you that have Chevy franchises, back when Chevy had the big connection with Edmonds, Auto Nation had a lock on all the ads inside the Edmonds site. The only way I could get my ads to appear on Edmonds was going through the back door using Google. And we got them in there. We bid max. I found out what the maximum bid was. Um, optimize your campaigns and ad groups for higher quality scores. People, quality scores determine how much you have to bid to get your ad to show up. If you can master the art of raising your quality score, you can get lower cost traffic to your website. Every one of you in this room is capable of doing this. Do not expect an outside provider to get involved with this. They say they will. They're churning numbers. Like you can't, it's too much to expect them to do. The higher the quality store score, the lower your minimum bid and the price that you're going to pay per click. Quality score is determined by the click-through rate, the relevance of the text in the ad itself, the historical keyword performance, you know, compared to other uh, advertisers, and the content and layout of your landing page. This is new. A lot of people don't know about this. Uh, I went to this Google workshop about a month ago, and they told me they did this around the first of the year. Whatever your landing page is connected to your ad, Google immediately goes in there and indexes it. The more relevant it is to the search word, the more likely your ad that links to your landing page is to show up. Um, which is, again, I'm never amazed at the genius of these people at Google. Steps to increasing your quality score. I'm not, we're out of time, so I'm not going to go through that. But if you want to take a look at it, um, if any of you want to know about it. I'm still working on understanding this stuff. Uh, basically, I ripped this off from the Google workshop. I copied and pasted off there to build these slides, but that's how you do it. Um, this is my, one of my accounts. We have multiple accounts, two types of campaigns, keyword and site targeted. I'm going to pick up speed here. Keyword variations. And this is what I'm talking about. You, <laughs> this is some of the most fun stuff I've ever seen. You get to look at how many customers are searching for a certain string of keywords compared to how many of your competitors are bidding on it. So if you have a, a keyword, you know, for example, when I first saw this, see that Phoenix Chevrolet dealers? What do you think the first thing I did was? I went and bought phoenix-chevrolet-dealers.com. Second thing I did is I went and bought phoenixchevroletdealer.com. This is how we acquire URLs. We look at keyword popularity because if I put the keywords in the URL, I bake it into the ad, I can then get content placement at one-third the cost of a pure purchase of the keyword. Uh, this right here, folks, is the secret sauce. This is it. This is the secret sauce. If you're a Chevy store, I, I feel your pain because I got them all. <laughs> Except for the ones Chapman and, and, uh, and a couple of my competitors snagged while, because I only had so much money a month to buy URLs. Originally designed, there's, here's another little, this is, I, I was going to put this in the dirty tricks presentation. Google has a tool where it'll extract the keywords out of your website. So I was experimenting with this and I said, why do I got to use my website? So I put in Chevrolet.com. It was like a keyword bonanza. It was like it was the gusher effect. <laughs> I got like 400 beautiful keywords, bam, bam, bam. Got to see how popular they were. You know, you see stuff like this, Chevrolet Malibu, everybody in my market bids on that. Yeah. When I first started, it was like that. Now all the other stores have 
jumped on the bandwagon. I have one of my competitors literally. Yep. I have one of my competitors literally tells me, he says, Ralph, he goes, all I do is I sit back and I watch what you're doing down at Courtesy, and then I just copy it and do it better. And <laughs> Chapman Chevrolet, Nick Bruce, I have a lot of respect for him. Every microsite he builds that copies one of mine is better than mine. I get very jealous. I try to hire him, but he makes too much money. Um, over here, this, I, I just I love these tools. February search volume, advertiser competition, add or remove to your campaign. You can literally dial this into where you're bidding separate bids for each word, and you can have a separate destination URL for each word. So we go in and we select our words. We just, and I, I actually did this this morning. I was building these slides. 896 keywords added to my ad group. Doesn't take long to hit 100,000. I've done it. That's when you open up another account. But you've got to use a different credit card. Otherwise, the only one ad appears. Uh, over here, these words are inactive because I didn't bid enough because my quality score was too low. So I go in. I select them. These words that are now, I've now dropped out of the bidding for. I check them off, I raise the bid. I raise the bid to $5.17. If the minimum is five, my competition's bidding five, I'm bidding 517. I change my position preference to high. Sometimes you might want that to be low for cost savings. I go back to the main screen, and there they are. 517 is my bid on those keywords, and it shows my position preference, and I'm live. That active, if I you float your cursor over there, a little pop-up window tells you that your ad is appearing right now uh, when people search for that keyword. When we look at the campaigns, I'm going to talk just for a second on the difference between keyword and site targeted. When you create an ad, you can create a text ad, an image ad, a local business ad, a mobile text ad. You can push it out to people's cell phones. They, it'll show up when they do cell phone searches. You can also do video ads. I've done the video ads. I haven't figured out how to make them work very well. Right now, the text words outperform the video ads, but I'm sure that that'll change eventually. These are some uh, examples down here, some, little, some ads that we build, and using the Google to push the ads to specific targeted websites that we wanted our ad to play on. You can build your ads in Flash. You can build them in uh, animated GIFs, videos, uh, the business ads, these do very well. You get a lot of activity on your business listings. Plus, it's, it's a map and it shows your dealership. You can customize all the stuff in your business listing. When you go to make changes, Google sends you a, a postcard to, by mail, a postcard. It has a PIN number. You got to then go into the website and activate your business listing with that PIN number. The hardest part is getting people in the dealership to know that that postcard has to get to me. And I find them all over the place, service department, parts department, everywhere. Uh, cost per thousand bidding, this to me, in our market, the keyword bids have gotten so competitive, I can now do display ads and get a lower cost for traffic than the keywords because all the other Chevy stores, it's like, a, it's like a war zone. So what I'm doing is going into other areas that they haven't figured out yet, and while it's still cheap enough and I can bid on cost per thousand, and I just I monitor which websites produce the traffic, I raise the bids on the ones that produce. I lower the bids on the ones that don't. This shows um, the initial setup of a targeted site campaign. When you pick your websites, one of the coolest tools I've ever seen, Google lets you search using a variety of criteria for websites to push your ads into. In this particular case, I picked vehicle shopping under automotive using the browse categories. And then I picked Automart and Auto Trader. I pick them, I'm going to click the zoom, I pick them and then um, <clears throat> we browse the categories, pick the websites, we hit submit to add the selected sites, it brings you back to the summary page, and there's my automart and autotrader.com now in the mix on what I'm bidding on to have my ads appear on their websites. You can also just type in a topic, whatever you can think of. In this case, I typed in, what does it say, auto purchase advice. 
And then it pulls up websites. I pick reply.com and carsforsales.com. I added those. I add selected sites. In this next category down, I went back in there and, and put in URLs. I put down, you know, Dealix. Have you ever heard of invoicedealers.com? It's a Dealix site. I used to be able to get my ads there, and they now block me. Every website can say block that particular advertiser. I'm now blocked from some of these sites. In this case, though, here's what Google does. They still want my money. So they say, I'm blocked from that site. But here's some other websites that do the same thing, and they'll let you put your ad on them. I love these guys. They, they, I, I said to the woman at Google, switch to get rich. She goes, what? You all heard that, right? Switch the customer to a different car. I go, that's what you're doing here. You're, you're doing the switch on me. Um, here, this is really kind of cool. Demographics. One of these days, I'll figure out how to make this pay off. I'm still experimenting with it. But you can pick out annual household income, gender, age, and look, and it'll find websites based on the demographics of the people visiting that site. In this case, I added Business Nation. .com and I added dodgeform.com because they're high income and the right age, add selected sites. They also have advanced options. When you click on that, you can get into ethnicity, children in the household, so on and so forth for targeting your ads. Mini ad agency online. Bidding strategies. How do I know what my competitors are bidding? You're going to find out because you're going to get shut out. Bidding wars are bad, decide what a keyword acquisition is truly worth to your store. Don't, sometimes you get caught up and you overbid because you get, your ego gets involved. Don't do that. This, you have to understand what a, what a, a unique visitor is worth. Um, why can't you see your ad? Here's the issues that it could be. If you want to take a look at your ad without paying for the clicks, go to google.com ad preview and you'll be able to see your ads in a simulator. Here's a report for last year. This is from my main account. We spent $221,000. We generated 119,437 uh, visitors, 86 million impressions, $2.56 per thousand people. And our click through, our average cost per click was $1.85. Average cost for conversion runs uh, close to $40. $40. Yep. Well, you have to look at it this way.